Welcome everyone. Today we are going to be practicing a yin sequence and we're going to be using two props today. The first is the wall, my very favorite prop to use for yin yoga. So I'll have you make sure that you're set up near a wall. Um, your mat might be facing the opposite direction as me. We're eventually going to end the class bringing our legs up against the wall. So you want your shoulders and the back of the head to be supported by the mat when we do. And the other thing that we will use, we will use a strap or something that you can use as such. The class is going to be on the shorter side. And we'll begin on our feet today. So grab anything else that you need and then you can join me in a standing position. Initially, you can take your feet hip distance apart, maybe even a little bit wider. You can lift the toes and then one by one firmly connect them to the floor. Close the eyes. And as you begin to shift your body weight just gently from side to side, eventually find your center, find a strong stance, really ground through the feet, hugging the navel up and in, getting a little bit taller through the crown of the head. We'll take three big clearing breaths together. Big inhale through the nose. Exhale, big sigh, let it fall. Twice more, just like that. Inhale. Full exhale. Last time, inhale, find length. Exhale to ground down. You can gently open the eyes. We'll begin to simply lift the heels, coming high up onto the balls of the feet, and then lowering the heels down to the earth. We'll just keep moving just like this for a little bit. Eyes can either find a soft and steady point of focus, or you could keep the eyes closed. We're just coming into some really, really simple movements to wake up the joints before we settle into stillness. Last moments here. And then lower the heels down to the earth. Take a moment and simply pause, feel. And then you can bring your knees towards one another. You can find a gentle squat, bring the hands right above the knees. And then we just begin to draw some big circles with the knees. So we extend them forward, stretching into the ankles, opening the knees out wide. And you keep creating your own circular patterns. They can be really big, they can be really small. Just notice what you feel in the ankles, in the toes, in the knees. And now begin to move in the opposite direction. Finding stillness, finding length through the spine once again, and then open the feet wider. Um, wider than the hips, doesn't have to be anything too crazy. You can bring your hands on the hips. We'll begin to take some really slow circles with the hips. So first we can move them out to the right. Extend the hips forward, you can engage the glutes. Move the hips to the left, and then extend the hips back. And then create your own circular movement at whatever pace feels beneficial for your body right now. Completing this last circle and then begin to move the hips in the opposite direction, remembering to engage the glutes as you extend the hips forward. And then let that movement flow down. You can keep your feet at this wide stance. Open the arms wide. Make sure you're not going to crash into a wall as I just was. <laughs> and then begin to just rotate the torso from side to side. You might get some snaps, some crackles, some pops. 
Keep your focus inwards. Keep your feet grounded initially, but then if it feels good, you can rotate onto the ball of the opposite foot. And then slowly, without abruptly stopping that motion, just let it slow down all on its own. We'll begin class with three minutes of shaking. One of the most beneficial practices to do for grounding, for releasing stagnant energy from the body, for moving lymphatic fluid throughout the body. So many good things come from this simple practice. So we'll bring our feet hip distance apart and then invite a gentle bend into the knees. Relaxing the arms, you can close the eyes. The feet remain grounded and you just begin to find this bobbing motion up and down. It originates in the soles of the feet, the knees, but eventually because the entire body is passive, you'll begin to Feel the entire body slowly following that gentle momentum and begins to move up and down. We're going to be here, like I said, for a few minutes, so really keep the body as passive as it could be. You can put your own little flavor to it. And I encourage you to make some silly faces. You can release any sounds. Grounding through the feet, but feeling the motion with your stable center. We'll be here about a full minute longer, so maybe you make your shaking a little bit more dramatic, maybe less so. Keep it going. Notice any resistance that comes up as you shake, whether it be in the physical body. Tension is revealed through the simple movements, but it could also be in thought. Notice if it feels silly, if you're judging the motion, if you are planning the day ahead or ruminating on something from the past. See if you can use this gentle shaking motion to stay right here. We're here for just a little bit longer. We've now been here for over two minutes. So we don't want the motion to slow down abruptly. There's a lot of momentum. So see if you can just begin to, or rather stop feeding that shaking motion. And it's gonna take a little bit, but notice how the motion slows down. Layer by layer. Breath by breath, the body can arrive back into stillness. Take a moment and close the eyes. If they're not closed, find stillness. Resist the urge to fidget. And see if you can just feel the residue of the past few minutes. We'll now move into our more traditional yin-like shapes. Reminder that we would like to be near a wall. So we'll slowly lie all the way onto your bellies, coming into crocodile pose. That's opening the elbows wide, stacking your hands on top of one another, forehead to the hands. Feet can be as wide as the mat, toes in, heels out, whatever feels natural. Close the eyes. And see if you can find an even rhythm of breath in and out the nose. Mm. 
And as we do settle into more yin-like shapes, our goal is to stay incredibly curious about the breath. Noticing the movements and the shifts that it's creating underneath the surface. Our first shape, extended wing pose. Open your left arm wide, left palm faces down. Right palm right by your low ribs. And then bend your right leg. Roll to the left, bringing any portion of this right foot down to the ground. You could slide a pillow or a prop underneath your left ear. If the right foot on the ground doesn't serve you, you can also have your knees more towards your chest, like a fetal position. You could also keep the soles of the feet both on the ground. That's more intense, and that doesn't mean more advanced. We want to find that opening in the body that is sustainable. Finding your breath. And just for now, give it space to speak. few full slow rounds of breath. And slowly you can now begin to release lowering on your belly. Rotate your left ear, your left cheek down to the, or rather, rotate your right ear, your right cheek down to the ground, gaze over the left shoulder. Arms frame the side body, palms face up. Just take a few rounds of breath and notice how you breathe. Moving to the opposite side, less instruction this time around. Open the right arm wide, right, tom, right palm faces down. Bend your left leg and then roll to the right, bringing any portion of that left foot down to the ground. And the side, it might feel entirely different than the opposite. So you can take any leg variation, fetal position, both feet on the ground. You could support your knees with pillows. Close the eyes. And let the body speak. We're here for just a little longer. Is there one more way that you can simply allow the body to soften? And very, very 
slowly we begin to release the shape, returning the left hip down to the ground. And then we'll rotate the opposite ear. So left ear, left cheek down to the ground, arms relaxed by the sides of the body, palms face up. Breathe into the back body. Feel yourself breathing into the front and back, both side of your both side bodies as well. Giving yourself time to integrate whatever experience you've had. And then you'll bring your palms right by the low ribs. Move slowly as you bring the neck back through neutral. And shift the hips back towards your heels to a tadpole pose. That's a wide kneed forward fold. You could choose to support your chest with pillows, with props, with blankets, or the forehead. You extend the arms forward, allowing the chest, the forehead to soften down towards the ground or choose to use props. And we'll be here for about two minutes. You have the option to stay as you are, or with the forehead resting on the ground, you can bring your elbows slightly forward and then bring your palms to touch like a prayer position Begin to extend your fingertips either upwards or towards the nape of the neck. And then once you're there, you can choose to scoot your elbows forward. So this variation, we're working into the triceps. Wherever you are, close the eyes. And now the breath creates the movement. Last few slow cycles of breath here. And then slowly, vertebra by vertebra, you can lift the torso, rise all the way up. I should have said, slowly release the arms so there's no hurry in that transition. Lifting the torso, rising up, and then you can bring the knees to touch. So you can choose to stay right here for the next few moments or find any comfortable seat. I'm gonna show it to you from behind. We're gonna invite a little bit of release into the upper back. Interlace your hands behind you. Sit in such a way that your shoulders can be stacked above the hips. And then bring your interlaced hands towards your outer right hip. Lower your right ear, your right cheek towards your right shoulder. And you can choose, you can kind of rock your head a little bit forwards and back. Finding sensation in the left side of the neck. For me, sensation really intensifies when I direct my right elbow tip back and then down towards the floor. Slowly circle your chin towards your chest. And then by way of the low back, bring your hands towards the outer left hip. And then rotate your left ear, your left cheek towards the left shoulder. 
Same goes, you can kind of rock your head forwards and back until you find some release of tension in the right side of the neck. Take a few breaths there. And slowly release. Circle your chin towards your chest, hands to the low back. And then by way of the low back, you can release your hands. And from now on, we'll be using the wall. So at this point in class, grab your strap. And then to get up right up against the wall, um, there's really two ways of doing it. The first is just doing as like I am and bringing your hips as close as you can to the wall, leaning on your side, and then extending your legs up from there. You could as well start by coming on your side, lying down there, and then extending your legs upwards. Either way, we want the feet, or rather the hips, about six inches to a foot away from the wall. We want to feel our low back really firmly planted down to the ground, relaxing your arms by your sides. Take all the time you need to fidget to adjust certainly just took me a moment to arrive. <laughs> so the legs, they could be hip distance apart or maybe even slightly wider. Your low back is pressing down to the earth. As you close the eyes, you can feel the breath moving up and down along the spinal column. And over time, this gentle inversion will intensify. You might notice that the feet, they might get a little tingly, numb. That's all good. That's, in fact, really beneficial. Our job is to be as passive as we could be within this moment. Soon we'll invite some brief muscular engagement into the shape before we settle into one last long yin hold. But before we get there, let your upper body really find whatever shape feels good. Hands to the belly or arms relaxed by the sides. You could cactus the arms. And see if you can take some of the slowest, most, most conscious breaths of the class. All right, and here is where we invite a little bit of spice into the shape. Grab your strap. Left leg is gonna stay really passive. Extend your right leg upwards. And we're not looking for a massive hamstring stretch, but we are lifting our right heel off of the wall. See if you can extend your right heel up. Try to actively draw your right toes in towards the shin. So even if you're not holding the strap, you have that action of knee extension. So you extend behind the right knee and then hold the strap with both hands. Arms are straight. So here we're really looking for muscular engagement. Keep challenging the body, extending through the right heel, right toes coming inwards. Try to straighten behind the right leg. We're here for just a little bit longer, but the body does get lazy every few seconds. So really grip the strap with your hands. Your hands should be feeling the work, extending through the heel, bringing the toes back in towards your shin. You might notice that the calf starts to speak as well. Extending behind the right knee, feeling what you feel. 
and really slowly you can go ahead and release the strap from your right leg. Go ahead and give it a shake, give it a wiggle, let it be passive once again as you gently return your right foot back to the wall. Take a moment and pause. Just notice how the right side of your body feels in comparison to the left. And then you'll bring your strap to the ball of the left foot and bring your left heel just a few inches or so away from the wall so that your left knee can extend. Driving your left heel up, your toes coming inwards towards the shin, holding the strap with both hands and then engaging that left leg as much as you could, drawing the toes in towards the shins, straightening behind the left leg, arms are straight, you're actively gripping the strap as much as you can, so our goal is to really demand that the joints within the body move to the best of their ability, explore, get curious, toes in towards the shin, extend behind the knee, Last few moments. And slowly you can go ahead and release your strap from your left hand, from your left leg rather, from your hands. You can go ahead and give that left leg a shake and then return it back to the wall. Now you have the choice of either keeping your hips as they are, or you might begin to shimmy your hips a little bit closer to the wall. For the next few minutes, it'll be a traditional yin hold, finding stillness, just simply noticing how the belly rises and falls. And remember, our goal is always curiosity. So when the mind does wander from the breath, from the body, it's not an indication of the practice having lesser merit or a means to criticize or judge. Just stay curious. Where did it go? Instead of focusing on the breath and the body, where did your energy go? What thoughts are stealing your focus, your energy, your power? And when needed, you just simply return back to the breath. Ah, yes, my belly is rising, my belly is falling. And it's that practice of re-patterning our focus. Of redirecting our energy. Refocusing our energy back within that makes this practice rich. The mind's going to wander. It's part of it. But how much can you notice along the way? Last minute or so here.
very, very, very slowly honoring that you might feel some tingling, some numbness, a change in circulation. You'll begin to either just bend your legs, bring the soles of the feet to the wall, or perhaps you're in a position where you could gently hug your knees inwards towards the chest. And we'll be here for just a moment. You can sway a little bit from side to side. We'll close with a very brief spinal twist. And we're going to use the wall. So here you do need to shift your hips slightly back. It's exactly as we would do on the ground without the wall. You always have the option to do a normal spinal twist, or if you choose, you'll bring your arms to the side, check that your feet can just barely touch the wall, so that when you shift your hips one or two inches to the left and lower the knees to the right, you can just gently rest your feet up against the wall. That different vantage point often Allows the body to feel into the twist a little bit differently. Find stillness, knowing we're not going to be here for too long at all. Last few deep rounds of breath here. Slowly, slowly, slowly bring the knees back in through the midline. You can hug them in towards the chest or you can keep them at the wall, whatever feels good. Shift your hips one or two inches to the right and lower the knees to the left. A brief spinal twist. Last few full rounds of breath. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Bring the knees back in towards the midline. Give yourself one final last loving squeeze. And then make your way to your variation of Shavasana. Opening the legs wide, opening the arms wide, giving yourself permission to fidget to adjust to take any last little movements that you need so that you can really allow these next few minutes to be a place for you to receive this is where i'll leave you today from my heart to yours thank you so much for being here i hope to see you soon